What's up, everybody? I'm Nick Taylor with The Crafty Gentleman. Today, we're at the lovely town of Ajax with Ken Williamson of Falcon Brewing Company. Thanks for having us, man. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. So what beer do you have for us today? I have, uh, my personal favorite of ours, the Salem Stout. Um, it's a uh, rich, full-bodied, not exactly in the dry stout category, not exactly an imperial dessert stout, but you know something with a bit of uh, heft to it, and um, it's a nice sipper. Sweet. Should we yeah. try it? Yeah, let's, let's try it out. Cheers. Cheers. Never tried this one before. <laughs> well, I'm glad this is the this is the moment. You can take the booze character on it for sure, right? Yeah. Right up front. When it's coming in at 6.6 percent, you know, it's getting to that point where. You know, it, it it is on the on the higher end yeah. for the style right. per se. So, um, but you know, I think it's it's nice. That's kind of what helps it stand out yeah. amongst the selection of stouts that that you'd see around. Um, you know, and it's not to say I love the the lighter ale styles that we do as well. Yeah. Kind of like English milds, ESBs. Those are great. There's right. a time and a place, but you know, sometimes you just want to end the night off with uh, with like a nice full bodied. Yeah. yeah, and there's like a certain like richness to this as well that you won't see in like what a lot of people are doing with those pale ales and like IPAs and stuff, right? Yeah. So it sets it apart in that regard too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I I always like to put a stout in front of someone because you know they either are familiar with the style and then they're kind of looking for something different, right? Or they've never had a stout before and it's like intimidating, yeah. or so it's perceived to be, right? But um, you know, you just you just have a sip and, and you realize that, oh yeah, I mean, it's complex, but right. it's definitely doable. People are apprehensive around stouts and the color too, right? The it's color. very off-putting. Yeah. yeah, pitch black, Yeah, you know, can't even really see, yeah, you see no, through it at all. Yeah. yeah. And it's like what you said when you were pouring it, you were like, it's like being afraid of open water, that feeling? Yes. That is understandable for people that are like, aren't crazy about this style or haven't tried it yet, right? Oh, I know, right? And um, you know, it, it just, the beauty of it, you know, the color black goes with with a lot of things, right? Yeah. So I'd like to think it pairs well with a lot of foods too. So I'm with my sweater right now. That's pretty yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah. Sweet. So if we talk about uh, Falcon as a whole, um, you guys took, it feels like you took a non traditional approach to like getting to here to this tap room right mm -hmm. um where'd you guys get started and how did you guys get into the craft beer market so we were actually originally stoville brewing company okay and we brewed a couple beers like um our red falcon ale mm -hmm. and uh our hellas lager we were contract brewing those for the longest time um we were in talks with the town of stoville to um, you know, lease one of the properties right. in the downtown area there. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, it never really panned out um, and, uh, you know, kind of had to switch up the name. Right. Kept uh, kept our, our, our two flagship beers, but found this lovely spot down here in Ajax. Right. Um, works out well because uh, yeah, I was just born in the hospital around the corner. Oh, nice. Yeah, so, you know, it, it, it it worked, it worked for here. us. Yeah, 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 for sure. You know, know a lot of people in the area. Right. Um, it's just great to kind of be back in the hometown. It'd be if you, weird if uh, it was still called Stoville Brewing Company and like you guys were here. <laughs> You'd be like, yeah. what is going on? <laughs> well, that's it, right? And, um, you know, when you're kind of going through a rebrand like that, yeah. you got to think of sort of the, the value that you've already put into all the hard work and getting your name out there. Right. Um, that's why, you know, the Red Red Falcon Ale, that was like, you know, we've been in LCBOs with that beer for, oh, geez, years. So, yeah. um, you know, we kind of went with that whole thing, you know, the red, the white, the, right. the word Falcon. That's where it all came from. Yeah. It came from that beer. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So when you guys, you guys were brewing beer and selling beer uh, before you even had a tap room, right? That's right. Yeah. So as a result, you relied on, relied on a lot of like bars, pubs, and restaurants. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's, you know, there's, uh, I guess there's there's a bunch of different ways you can go about this, right? Um, you can do a fully contract scheme. You know, um, I know some brewers like to refer to themselves as like gypsy brewers, right? You kind of uh, find the find the best breweries available to you. Right. and make your beer there. And that's, 
fantastic and all, but um, you know, we kind of thought uh, to ourselves, let's let's make a home. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think it turned out well. The the town of Ajax was you know embracing us in open arms. Right. Uh, we we can tell by you know this, the same clientele we get every single week. Just like a loyal group that comes in, right? Well, yeah. 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 So so it's good. So with the guy that started it was Jim, right? Yeah, Jim. And Jim's my dad. He's your dad. Yep. yep. And he has like a wealth of knowledge in this area, right? He does. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, he was, um, you know, running the Ontario Brewing, sorry, Canadian Brewing Awards before right. we got into this. So it's, uh, yeah, we've we've been around beer a long time. Let's just say that. Um, Speaking of Brewing Awards, not to cut you off, but this actually won an award, right? Yes, it did. Yeah. So uh, last year's Canadian Brewing Awards, I'll say last year's because uh, the next, this year's is coming up next right. weekend. Right. So <laughs> yeah, last year we won for the uh, um, stout category um, and we were pretty, pretty thrilled about that. Yeah. So we sent the brewmaster out to Halifax and he had a grand old time, but you know, he earned it. That's he exciting. keeps making good beers. So. That's really Super exciting. happy about that. That's, That's really, really cool. cool. So having him uh, at the like at the helm of it, mm -hmm. it must have been and it must still be like a pretty big help to Falcon and what you guys are like made of, I guess you would say, right? Oh yeah. 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 I mean it's um like from you don't exactly know, you know, what you will be good at or what the customers will respond to. Right. And it's great having someone like David who's that's our brewmaster. Right. Um, you know, he has a very sort of creative intuition about making beer. Yeah. A long time beer maker. And uh, yeah, you know, he knocks it out of the park. So right. we're super thrilled. So when you guys like started, you didn't have a plate, like you didn't have a tap room, right? And most breweries that would open with a tap room, they would start out with four or five different offerings. Um, you guys had like the one and then followed with the Helly's Lager, right? Like, yeah. You had the Red Falcon Ale. And then that, now that you guys are in the tap room and you've been here for a couple of years now, right? Is there like, not a desire, but is it easier now to experiment and explore in different flavors and different styles? Yeah, so we have, um, you know, m more smaller fermentation tanks. Right. And as well as a pilot brew system with two fermentation tanks attached to that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, no, it's great. I mean, the beer turnover is very fast. Right. Um, like no beer that you'll have here is probably older than like three weeks old just because right. we, we don't make a lot of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a blessing and a curse, right? Right. Of course, I mean, you can't run a business without really understanding economies of scale, right? Yeah. So if I could make, uh, you know, a thousand liters of a beer right. and sell that, that would be great too. But, um, you know, again, then you'd be locked into that whole load of product that you've made yeah is there um like you said you have a pilot system do you run everything through that before you put it into a bigger tank yeah usually yeah, yeah. um you know the the ones that we've been doing a while um those are are pretty well you know we know what we're doing with them right uh but you know we'll, we'll do kind of some funky stuff that it's kind of nice so we can have a quick turnaround time with them right. so Doing like a, a chili lime IPA, for example, right, I yeah. could, I just got the scotch bonnet peppers for that. Um, you know, we'll see how it turns out. Right. Um, it's just kind of fun, right? I, I can do things like that. And, you know, now that we've gone from like home brewing to pro brewing, uh, we can actually test it out on the market, you know, right. and not just like giving it to your buddies. Yeah, and, exactly. You know, they'll probably not tell you the honest truth. Yeah, like, this is great. And you leave the room and they're dumping it out. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas if I put it in the fridge, if it's yeah. still sitting in the fridge, then I know. Right. Oh, exactly. yeah. Maybe that one wasn't so good. Is there one thing that you guys would say you're you're known for, like a style or or a few styles that you're known for, like a, a kind of a genre for brewing that you guys have? Well, I, I kind of think of it just because of the success of our uh, Irish Red Ale. We do sort of a lot of the tradition. Um, so, you know, for like example, the Stout right. or our English Mild, yeah. um, Irish Red Ale, um, Pale Ale, right? Um, these are all beers that uh, have proven to 
to you know meet the palate of consumers. Um, Even so like I, brown ale. Oh, brown ale, yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for reminding me of the yeah. beer I just told you was my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty diverse menu too. Like you do still have those things you mentioned, like the lagers, pale ales, IPAs, but then you have the other ones that you mentioned previously as yeah. well. So it's yeah. kind of like best of both worlds, right? I mean, if you do your market research, um, like the Pilsner beer style right. per se is, you know, worldwide one of the best selling beer styles yeah, really ever. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, you can't really be blind to that. Right. If, if I could just, you know, make like far out funky beers all the time, that'd be really cool. But you know, people come in and, and, and they have their preferences. Right. You so, gotta appeal to a wider audience, right? Yeah, we try and we try and match that every now and then. Right. Yeah. That's really cool. So you guys have like a plenty of things happening at the brewery all the time. Yeah. It seems like. It seems like you always have events going on. Yep, yeah. Having um, such a spacious tap room. Yeah. Um it, it it works out well, just kind of you know, we wanted the whole tap room to be like a community thing where people can come in and be comfortable and right. um, you know just hang out. So it's it's good that they you know the interest comes from them. They approached us and like right. have my event, have my event. You guys should have euchre night. You guys should have trivia night. And like all these things kind of build and it's like just an ongoing schedule of like fun things going on. Right. So these all the, all the events that you have, like the ones you just mentioned, they all came from people just suggestions that came in. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, you know, we're, we're like we're, we're we're just trying to trying to do. Uh, our our job on our end making the beer right yeah, yeah. and then so it's kind of like that that great customer feedback you get of people saying like right. you know we'd love it if you had a trivia night so that's cool so when can people come and do like trivia night and euchre night and are those the only two weekly ones that you have uh yeah they're not weekly the trivia night seems to be monthly okay. and then euchre night is bi-weekly okay so um yeah euchre is actually tomorrow nice um, I guess this probably won't be date stamp, but <laughs> <laughs> but it actually would be Tuesday, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it's just something something fun to do after work, you know. Right. People come in and it's somewhere to hang out. Not you know, it's not a very high high cost to them. It's so right. they can you know hang out with their friends and family and have a yeah. good time. Yeah. One of the big events it seems like that you guys have is uh, like live music that happens, mm -hmm. right? And does that happen every weekend? It's every Friday night. Yeah. 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 We usually set someone up in the corner, be it, you know, one to three person band. Right. Um, it is a big place, but we don't want to get too, uh, too out of hand with no full bands. Yeah. No, no <laughs> full bands. We have had a drummer in here once and it, it was just, it was rocking. It was rocking. Yeah. That's for sure. But, um, you know, you got to meet the ambiance and sweet. Yeah, it seems like it would be a pretty lively event. And I've seen like videos or, or pictures and stuff from it. And it just feels like uh, like with the band and then with all the people in here, it just feels like not too crowded, but just like a rock in time, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's um, we have adequate seating, so it never gets really too uh, too milling about per se. Right. right but right. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good, good, good time, good venue. I'd like to think. Yeah. Do you guys have uh, like the same people come in and play music, or are you looking for local artists or anything like that? Yeah, we're always looking for something interesting. Right. Um, so you know, well, we do have a schedule to meet, but you know, we will try and slot people in here and there. Right. Um, you know, if it's a nice Saturday, perhaps we'll have someone Saturday during the day. Oh, cool. You know, that That's kind really of thing. Cool. So. Sweet. Was well, there anything else that you want to tell us about before we wrap this up? Or um, you know, keep a lookout in uh, the local local supermarkets, LCBOs, beer stores. Right. Uh, we'll be sort of hopefully, you know, putting uh, Salem Stout into tall cans soon. Um, right. We're trying to get that out there. Right. You know, um, and have a, an another another skew for yeah. people to enjoy our beer. What uh, can you find currently at the LCBO supermarket? Yeah, like LCBOs, that? we have our Red Falcon Ale. Right. Uh, beer stores, we have uh, our Red Falcon Ale and our Hellas Lager. Uh, grocery stores, select grocery stores, sort of the, yeah. the same mix as well. Cool. Um, yeah, something, something for everyone. Sweet. Sweet. That's what we're trying for, so. That's good. That's, That's great, great, man. Thanks so much. Oh, yeah, thanks, appreciate thanks, it. Thanks, Nick. Yeah. Very right. nice to meet you. Thank thanks you very for much. Coming thanks in. for the beer. Oh, yeah. No problem, buddy. <laughs> no problem. You came to the right place for that. <laughs>